spoken about this morning. Uh, uh, I, I listed some addictions. Um, l let's talk... Well, is any addiction minor league? I don't think it is, actually. But shopping, coffee, chocolate, sex, pornography. Um, the big boys, drink, drugs, gambling, smoking. You can add smoking into that. Uh, why not? Uh, if you are of a certain disposition, of a certain personality, you could be more prone to addiction than other people. Now, I, as I was saying with Anna earlier, I would consider myself to have a very addictive personality. Uh, so much so that uh, over the years, I've steered clear of things that I could see the attraction of, um, but I know because of I know my own personality, I know myself quite well that it's probably best to stay well clear of spirits, for instance. I do not drink spirits uh, because I know because I like a drink. OK, I like a glass of wine. I like a pint of beer. Uh, but I still clear of spirits because I know I've got that personality that I would like it. Uh, and that could be a problem for many, many reasons. So. If you want to be anonymous today, you can. That's fine. Um, I'd like to know your stories. Uh, have you ever suffered from an addiction? Now, it could be a really serious addiction. It could be one perhaps that you see as not being that serious. But I'd like to hear your stories today. How did it come about? What was it all about? And how did you get out of it? And if you're not out of it, would you want to get out of it? Um, so my email address, it's steve.ladner at bbc.co.uk. Text is 81333. Start your message with the word, Ken. E, uh, WhatsApp, 08000 321 333. Got confused there myself. And uh, you can give us a bell, 0800 756 1111, OK? Uh, I'd really love to hear your stories today. Uh, whether you want to put your name to it or an imaginary name, I don't care. It's fine. It's the story that's the important thing, because it might just help somebody else who's listening uh, today. Why are we talking about it? Because it is Addiction Awareness Week. Uh, and as I've kind of alluded to, addiction can take many forms. Now, at the weekend, uh, Kate, the, uh, the Princess of Wales, she spoke about her role as a patron of a charity called The Forward Trust. You might have seen this, but let's have a little listen. Addiction is a serious mental health condition that can happen to anyone. No matter what age, gender, race, or nationality. As patron of the Four Trust, I have met many people who suffered from the effects of addiction. Attitudes to addiction are changing, but we're not there yet, and we need to be. Still, the shame of addiction is stopping people and families asking for help, and people are still tragically losing their lives. We as a society need to recognize that the only way to help those suffering is to try and understand what has led them to addiction, to empathise with them and to be compassionate to their struggles. And so today, during Addiction Awareness Week, I want to share a message of support to those who are continuing to suffer. Please know that addiction is not a choice. No one chooses to become an addict. I want you to know that this is also a serious health condition. Please do not let shame hold you back from getting the help you so desperately the charity is leading the Taking Action on Addiction campaign, along with others, are working across the country, delivering life-changing work to help people recover and move forward. They are here for you, so please ask for help. I know this was not a choice. Recovery is possible. Powerful words, don't you think? I uh, saw this uh, the other day, uh, and that led me to want to talk about it on the radio today. Um, listening to that uh, is Penny Williams. She's our friend. Uh, she's the CEO of the charity Kenwood Trust. That's based in Yalding, and it's an alcohol and drug addiction charity. Morning, Penny. How are you doing? Good morning, Steve. How are you? I'm good. I'm really good. Thank you very much indeed. Um, how important uh, was it? Well, was A, uh, Kate saying those words to an audience, uh, but also having somebody like that getting behind um, a, a charity that helps people suffering from addiction? Well, absolutely. She she is so eloquent and she has put it um, incredibly well. And, you know, charities like Kenwood Trust welcome that support, that high-profile person helping people understand that it's not a choice um, people don't choose addiction. 
but recovery as possible, but having more understanding, which I think there has been more understanding since the pandemic. More people have realised that friends and family are drinking too much, for example, and we're very aware how the increase in drug taking has increased with um, young people. And we need to do something about it. We need to change society. We need to put more investment into education. This might seem like a really stupid question, but I'm good at those. Um, mm -hmm. what, what actually is addiction? How do you define addiction? Um, in, its, in its true sense, it's where people's lives change. So um, they change their behaviour and what they do based around their desire to, to drink or take drugs. Um, you have what there is termed as high-functioning alcoholics, for example, who are still working. But addiction means that you are self-medicating on a regular basis um, and it's usually increasing in volumes to escape traumas that often you've suffered. That's, that's the usual triggering point um, or other stresses. Mm. And I think it's probably very important to, to, to point out that addictions can happen to anybody. It doesn't matter how old you are, whether you're a man or a woman, whether you're uh, middle class, working class, whatever. A addiction can take anybody. Absolutely. At Kenwood Trust, we support people from absolutely all work walks of life, from chefs to carpenters to um, solicitors, um, all, all, all walks of life. Um, it's more about um, what you have suffered at some point in your life that you're trying to overcome by self-medication. And, and that's why there needs to be more understanding. Do you think... Um, I think it's generally accepted that the, the, the problem is getting worse and the pandemic perhaps has, mm -hmm. has put a magnifying glass on the subject because we've all spent more time in each other's company, as it were, uh, the people closest to us. So maybe uh, addictions which hadn't been noticed before have, have come to the fore. Um, why is it getting worse? Is it, uh, if we're talking about drink and drugs and, and, and gambling, for instance, uh, I, I suppose we could call them the big boys in, in the gambling world. Is it because of ease of access? Um, I think, I mean, I get asked so many times, what, what do I think the reasons are? And I think, you know, humans are complex and actually there's many different reasons. I think culturally we have that phrase, have a drink, it will be fine. Um, there's a lot of, I'd say, m most of the people that we treat have had trauma in, in their younger life that has never been um, treated or, or faced, um, and that has led into um, addiction. Um, and I think that just generally, people have stressful lives with young people. Um, social media has been a real trigger for uh, mental health and I think that this is where people often fall through services as well um, between mental health services and addiction services and which do you treat first um, all those challenges so I think it's many reasons I'm afraid I can't I can't mm, be mm. specific um, you know one of the questions I often get asked is you know if we put the price up of alcohol would that make a difference if we legalize cannabis would that make a difference it's all about education. Humans are, you know, very clever at overcoming challenges put in their way. And, you know, some people would buy alcohol over eating if the price is expensive. So that's not the answer. The answer is changing our uh, approach to the problem, um, education, and then ultimately support quicker. You know, we, we treat people who have... Uh, been addicted for maybe 20 years, um, by which time um, their bodies are suffering too. If we could get to them earlier, uh, it would be better for everyone all round. And I suppose some people don't realise they've got an addiction. It has to be pointed out by somebody else. Yes, that is the case. And we get many, many calls from families who are um, asking for help. They don't know how to um, support a loved one. Um, but ultimately, it's about the person themselves wanting recovery. Um, it's very hard for a family member to watch and it's very hard for a family member to influence that person. There is often something happens that makes 
those people actually face up to to um, their addictions and actually wanting to change. Mm. Um, uh, it's provide you, you were talking about education, and it's it, uh, uh, it, it's working. It, it, it it's teaching people about you know perhaps living. Um, well, it, it, within their means, but within their means with alcohol and knowing their limits and, and what have you. Let's talk about uh, drink, because I would imagine that that's probably, uh, you know, a, a pretty current one for everybody, uh, a common thing. And it's also um, example. So <laughs> it just struck me the other day we were at home and um, and Freddie uh, and, and I, was, we were saying, so uh, what's mummy's favourite thing, uh, Freddie? And he went cycling. And I said, what's Freddie's favourite thing? Star Wars. He said, and what's daddy's favourite thing? And he went, wine. And I just oh. thought, oh, oh, that was a punch in the guts. Thanks very much indeed. But but it's true, it's it, it for particularly for, for young people and for very young children as well, it's it's the example that we set, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. And again, this is where social media plays a part as well in influencing young people. Um, I mean the youth work that we do, uh, we're campaigning to increase the amount of education at school. There's only one hour a year in the curriculum currently and our 15 year olds to probably 18 year olds are uh, absolutely increasing their um, use of drink and drugs in particular at the moment and I think that's a result of, of the lockdown so yeah we all need to think about what we're doing and how we we influence our young people mm. and um Let's talk about the NHS briefly uh, uh, as well here, because y you you made the point that what do, what do you treat first, the mental illness uh, that maybe have sparked off the addiction, or do you uh, treat the addiction first? Um, what sort of support is there uh, away from the charity sector? What sort of support is there, do you think? And is it good enough? Um, well, I think if you talk to anyone in, in the mental health services, and we have to uh, on occasion... Um, they are absolutely overworked. There is not the time for either seeing enough people or even giving quality care to enough people. Now, that is my personal view uh, based on talking to certain people in, in the sector. Um, but I think we all recognise that the NHS needs a, a really good uh, relook and, um, and change. Um, it's not just about investment, I, I believe, having sat in A&E the other night, it's about a sort of reorganisation as well. But mm. again, my personal view. Mm. Um, let's talk about the human side of it. How do you persuade... First, no, let's, if, if somebody's listening to this now and they, th they think they might have an addiction but they don't think it's serious, what would you be saying to them? What, what, and what, what, would, what should you be looking out for in yourself as well? Um, well, I think, uh, as, as Princess Sir Wales said, it, it's recognising that you can get help. I mean, that is the first hurdle, is recognising that you perhaps are drinking too much. And that, that means really on a daily basis. That's not just, oh, I probably drink too much every Saturday. Um, it's about knowing that you look for that drink every every single day and possibly, you know, from early on in the day, not just an evening drink, drinking on your own. That's another um, uh, flag, if you like. Um, but reach out, talk to your GP, talk to your family. Uh, Kenwood Trust helps a lot of families um, get uh, signposting them to perhaps uh, a friend or family member getting the right support, whether it's in the community or in somewhere like Kenwood Trust, an actual rehab situation where you take people out of um, their environment and what I call a bit of a reboot. If you're away from all the distractions, you can focus on yourself for a few weeks mm. to um, try and overcome your addiction. Mm. So reach out is, you know, the number one message. Don't, don't, uh, don't avoid it. And if there's somebody close to you that you think is, is suffering, it, must, it can be so frustrating to try and get them to see uh, sense and very difficult, very difficult. Yeah, it's a ripple effect, and from our point of view, um, some of the calls that we have are, are, are just so heartbreaking. In particular, parents of this sort of 18 to 24-year-old age group who are classed as adults, um, they may still be living at home, but as a parent, you can't do anything about it. Um, and that's, I think, one of the toughest calls that we have, 
um, and helping those people uh, get the right help because, again, some of these people fall between mental health services and addiction. And because they're young, they're classed in the NHS as well. You know, then they haven't been addicted long enough yet. And, and I think that's just tragic. Um, we really need to do more for, as I say, 15 to 24-year-olds, I believe, in terms of education and support. Would you recommend people uh, who might have been affected by the conversation that we're having now, Penny, uh, do you think that they should, they should call their GP if, if they've got an issue, if they can get through uh, and get an appointment this side of Haley's Comet? Or um, should they reach out to, to somebody like the Kenwood Trust? Yes, I mean, Kenwood Trust uh, certainly are very happy to help. Um, I appreciate, uh, again, from a personal point of view, getting GP appointments is very difficult. Um, but, you know, reach out to the many different services that are available, um, AA, um, ourselves, Forward Trust. You know, there are, um, CGL is another large organisation that um, supports um, drug and alcohol services. So, um, yeah, reach out. Penny, thank you. It's always lovely talking to you. Bless you for your time. Uh, Penny Williams, CEO of the charity The Kenwood Trust.